They can't think for themselves. They sit back and they drink Coke all day and sit behind a video game system and then wonder why, oh, you're, oh, you're crazy, Brother Powell, for believing in a creator. Oh, you're insane. No, you're crazy. And you need to get off the video game system and somebody needs to preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ and so that they can be saved. That's what we need. And I'm sick and tired of these stinking video games. <laughs> <laughs> Got you, you Oh, oh! I didn't see you come in. Bad-tempered badger here. Today I'll be responding to a series of videos by Matt Powell. Seems to be a big thing in the podcast circuit these days. Let's see where he goes. Just uh, ha have a listen to it for a minute while I finish this. You know, I had an atheist tell me, I, I, I don't believe in God because I can't see God. I, I don't see him. Where is he? And he says, if, you, if, you, if, if Jesus Christ appears in front of me, I'll believe it. But let me ask you a question. This building, I don't know when this building was built, but you know what? I can't see the builder, but you know what? I have enough brains to understand that somebody put this place together. And I have another question. What is more complex, this, this little building that we have here or the, the world and the way things work together? If this world is more complex, wouldn't that demand that there'd have to be a designer? With a very basic understanding of how the world works, yes, it would look that way. When you actually examine the evidence, you can see through a process of scientific inquiry how the Earth formed, how life evolved from simple life to complex life to the myriad of species that we see today, which of course, us badgers at the pinnacle. The world is a very interesting place. If you broaden your mind, and look at the scientific understanding of how everything functions, life can be a wondrous experience. But if all you do is cling to your ancient fairy tales and stories of a better place that you're going to after you die, you'll miss everything there is to see while you're here. And this is just to answer another atheist that attacked me recently. He says, oh, well, you have to apply that same logic to God, because then God would have to be more complex. Well, let's think about that reasoning for a minute. Anybody knows that there's, it's, it's impossible for there within time to be an infinite amount of cause and effects. So if we go back far enough in time after cause, effect, cause, effect, cause, effect, yeah. there has to be a first cause or something that's actually outside of time, space, and matter. And if, what's amazing is any philosopher will admit it, but what's crazy is a lot of atheists will say, well, yeah, there's definitely an uncaused cause, but they won't admit it's God because they don't want to answer. Right. Yeah. Why would anyone admit that it's God when there's no evidence that it is? If you want someone to accept your hypothesis that the God of your Bible caused the universe to come into existence, you need to provide some evidence that that is the case. Otherwise, the honest position to take is there could be a cause for the universe. I don't know what it is. You know, and I, I'm, I'm going to use more scripture here, but you know, just let's say, for example, we had a beach party, you know. And we, we go out and we, we go to the beach and I see on, on the shore, I see like a sand castle on the shore. What, what idiot would say, oh, that just washed up on its own? I mean, how, how delusional would you have to be to, oh, it just washed up on its own? You know, somebody would say, no, there was an intelligent designer that made it. And so you have to apply that same argument of complexity to the universe. Yeah. The universe, my friends, was designed. Right. And uh, by this time, usually when I talk to an atheist, if they're honest, if they haven't gotten really mad and left, They'll at least say, okay, yeah, there's a God, you're right, but how do you know it's your God? And that's, that's what I was hoping they'd ask, right? Amen? And so um, God is the first cause. He's the uncaused cause. And notice it's a singular uncaused cause. There's only one God. There's not millions. And even, even a philosopher will tell you that there's only one, there's one uncaused cause. And they know that it has to be intelligent. And I believe it's loving. I believe it's the God of the Bible. And I believe he came down here. So gone flesh. So your answer to the question, how do you know it's your God is? I don't, I, I just I choose to believe it is. Great answer. At least it's somewhat honest. Well, let's have a look at another one of his videos. Um, it's funny, I was just talking to an atheist the other day and uh, he didn't know why we were in 2017 AD. I actually, no, it's uh, CE now. Or is it BCE? Ah, uh, oh, fuck it. Just stick with AD, it's simpler. 
You know, and obviously atheists aren't really the, the most smart people out there. So, you know, you see, you gotta kind of help them along. You know, but I remember telling this atheist, I said, I said, do you know why we're in 2017 A.D.? And he thought about it. He, and he's just a moment ago. It's funny. He, he was bragging about how well he knew his history. You know, oh, it goes, the Bible goes against history. Okay, why are we in 2017 A.D.? And he didn't have an answer. And the reason we're in 2017 A.D. is because when Jesus Christ died and rose again from the dead. Well, actually, it's the date that Jesus was supposedly born, but uh, most scholars assume a more accurate date to be between 6 and 4 B.C., not on the year 0 A.D. Everybody in Rome saw it. Everybody talked about it. Everybody heard of the gospel. Actually, no. Uh, according to my research, the only place where this is mentioned is the Bible, and the only supposed eyewitness account is uh, the Apostle Paul. Now, the eyewitness testimony of someone with a vested interest in something being true is not really very reliable evidence, is it? There doesn't seem to be any historical records of this event, which would probably have been a fairly significant thing if it had occurred. So, your, your case isn't looking very strong for this being a true event. It was being preached to all the nations by the apostles, and the Bible says that there was many infallible proofs of Jesus' resurrection. Many infallible proofs. It doesn't say just many little proofs. It says infallible, which means that, you know, infallible means it's a matter of fact. It's a matter of fact that he rose again from the dead, and it was for you and I. Yeah, but what are these infallible proofs? It doesn't actually say any of them, it just says that they exist. You can't use the Bible to prove the Bible, you need external sources. These atheists, they, they, they don't think about these things. You bring it up to them and they just don't even, oh, that never crossed my mind. Yeah, but we do think about them, that's why many of us became atheists in the first place. Uh, you know, it kind of sounds like, if this encounter happened at all, that you just ambushed somebody on the street who had never really thought about it, and said, well, what about this, and what about this, and what about that? It's not really a good way to get a good discussion on it. And I think that's the point of the story. You want a discussion that makes it seem like everyone you oppose has never thought about it, and doesn't have the brain power to put two and two together. Whereas if you actually talk to people who do think about it, and do look at historical evidence, and do consider the ramifications of what that evidence means, your position comes up severely lacking. Well, I think that's quite enough of this guy for one day. But uh, in other news, I'm doing a debate with Mr. Alpha 4, the Catholic chap I've spoken to a few times before. The exact video format of this debate is still being determined, but uh, it'll be ready to view in the next few weeks. I'll update you as soon as I know more. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.